guys. My name is Michaela Richardson. I am part of uh, Richardson's War Goats. Born and raised, my parents started our farm in 1999. We've been in the goat business for, well, I guess this year would be 20 years. Um, so today I'm going to do a video. Uh, I also am a leader for 4-H club. So today I'm going to do a video to show how to groom a breeding stock goat. Um, I'll do another video at another time with market. But today we're going to do a breeding stock doe. So I'm going to start off by washing her, drying her, and then I'll go into clipping. But I'm going to tell you um, kind of the shampoo we use. So we use a Sullivan Supply, the Vita Hair Volumizer. That's what I wash them with first. Super awesome at giving them clean. Super awesome at getting their, their hair nice and shiny and all their hair separated. And it makes it super easy to groom after uh, washing them with this. I go back in and I'm washing them a second time with Rejuvenate. It's another Vita Hair product by Sullivan. And this is the second round because this is for hair that's already clean. Uh, after we use this, this will make the hair super fluffy, um, super clean, super shiny, and it gives it a lot of volume and it also helps clip. So the clippers run through the hair super smooth, super easy. Um, doesn't clog up your clipper blades and it's really really my favorite product and it smells really good so that's what we're going to start off with today and i'm going to go ahead and wash her and get her dried and then i'll come back with a clipping video <laughs> watch it kind of go down so I always clip on the fifth speed it's, it's a lot cleaner it's a lot um, faster and it cuts the hair a lot crisper so I use this all the time it's my go-to um, I do have clippers that are corded uh, here watch out babe but the clippers that are corded I usually use those if I'm home uh, I always take these to the show. So much easier to maneuver around. You don't trip over cords. Um, it's easier to get under the goat, around the leg. It's a lot easier to get up on the head. Um, everything. 
everything's just easier without a cord attached to it. So I use these, I use a tin blade. As you can see, it's kind of backwards because I've got it facing on the selfie mode. Um, but it's a 1.8 millimeter tin blade. I need to clean this out. This is always what I start with. And then I've got these attachments here. So I have attachments arranging from um, one eighth to a quarter inch, to a half inch, to a three quarter inch, to an inch, and then to an inch and a half. Um, I don't use all those all the time. Every goat's a little different. With breeding stock, you don't shave the animal all the way down to the skin. So you have to kind of taper. There's a lot of different areas that are different lengths and I'll go over that whenever I uh, put up the, um, the full video of Grimm and the Goat. But uh, these are super easy. I'm not really sure where we got these. They're Oster brand, um, but we've had these probably since we've been in goats, so I'd say about 20 years. But they're easy. They just got these little hooks right here, and they clip on, and there you go. So when you clip, when you go with the hair, or against the grain of the hair, the hair's gonna go up in here, and it's gonna clip, and it's gonna be the same length all the way around. So you can literally shave the goat all the way around, and if the hair is long enough, it's gonna get cut to an inch long. Um, so this is the inch. I don't use this very often. Uh, I use this to get rid of some extra long hair on their sides of their bellies and stuff. But my main go-to is the quarter inch, the half inch, and the three quarter. So those are my top three that I use whenever I'm grooming breeding stock. Um, I use a quarter a lot on the smaller doe kids and smaller buck kids. And I use the half inch and the three quarter on the bigger does and the bigger bucks. And then I go in with the blending blade. So the next blade that I am obsessed with, and if I'm ever without this blade, I will probably not be able to complete my groom job. So this is a blending blade. It is a um, the Ultra Age Medium, also by Andy's. So, um, you can see it says blending, um, the ultra edge medium up here. So this is a wide blade. As you can tell, it's a little different looking than the tin blade. Um, super sharp, super crisp, super amazing. This is what I use to blend everything. So when I'm doing, let's say if I did a quarter someplace on the go, and then right next to it I did a half inch, there's gonna be a line in between that. And just like on people, when you do those fades on the guy haircuts and barbers and stuff, do that. Um, all that blending, same thing. So this is going to blend, and I'll show y'all how to do that. Um, it's my go-to, super, super awesome, but it takes getting used to to, to use. Um, it's a lot of practice. You can't just kind of jump in and start with it. I mean, you could, but it took me a lot of practice to get this down because it, you, there's, a, there's different techniques different ways to use it to your advantage and you can do lots of different cool things with this thing so blending blade tin blade uh, the clippers of course and then your attachments so those are all what I'm going to start with and I will switch over to the other side so you can actually see the goat okay so starting off I'm gonna get my clippers uh, this goat is an older doe she I try to keep as much hair on my older does as I possibly can because um, they've already got the size so you're not trying to you know prove any size she's a big doe she's a show doe um, we showed her last year and hopefully this year too when shows open back up so I'm going to start by I work front to back um, when I start I start with the neck the front of the chest right here so basically when you look at the goat Especially on a doe, you want something feminine, big body to carry your babies, heavy muscle because they are a meat goat, and you want them to flow. You want them to have balance when you're grooming them. So um, most show animals are already correct, they're already quality stock, uh, but when you're grooming them, you want to um, highlight those features on these animals. So when you're highlighting them, you want them to look feminine, so you want to take off all this extra hair their front and their chest and around their neck and up around their horns and their ears and stuff it gives them that nice prim clean um crop or like that just that really crystal clear look um you'll take off a lot of hair down here underneath the chest floor 
and in between the legs. So that's going to widen her. That's going to give um, a lot more depth in her chest floor, and that's also going to just go along with the whole look. So then you're going to move into the shoulder. So your shoulder starts right here. So I usually do on the older does, on young kids, I do a little different. On the older does, I do a half all the way around, all the way up in here, and I stop. So she's got a perfect color line to kind of go by. So we'll go by the line of her color. Uh, we'll go down to about right here. On this shoulder, I'll leave the shoulder completely alone if it's, you know, in good condition. So her hair's in great condition. Um, it's a perfect length. Now, if it was right after uh, the winter time or something, and it was long and fluffy, and she just had an enormous amount of hair, I would probably go over with a three-quarter first and kind of look at that length and see how that is. And then I would go shorter if I needed to. Um, so I'm going to leave all of this back here alone, totally alone. Um, so I'll start with taking this half, which got a half already attached on my clipper here. And I'm going to go all the way around the chest and around the neck. shoulders her withers um, and that's just to kind of help widen that out she's got the width there but you like I said with the show animals when you're grooming the whole purpose is to highlight their best features um, so that'll help highlight that by taking that down shorter and it's going to give that width if you look down from the back from behind her it's going to look wider it is wide but um, a groom job is everything on a goat so now I'm going to take a quarter and I'm going to go up in between her horns a little bit more. I went up to a half all the way up here to where the little chain is. So you can see that's wrapped around. And from there, I'm gonna take the quarter and go a little bit shorter up around the ears and up underneath the jaw, just to kind of blend that, clean that, and make that a lot more tapered off into um, her beautiful facial features. So that's what I'm gonna do next. attachment and I'm basically going to go up underneath and about an inch back from where I started with the half I'm just gonna flip up that hair and blend it so because in the order the sequential order of biggest to smallest fractions your next bigger um, size fraction up from a half is three quarter so I'm gonna go in and I'm going to blend that line a little bit even though I'm going to go back again with the blending blade in blend, this just makes it easier. It makes it, um, it gives you less hair to have to deal with and less of a line that you have to deal with. So it's going to be a lot easier in the long run. So now I'm going to go back with this three quarter. I'm going to go all the way around um, the outer edge of where I trimmed with the half and I'm going to blend that line just to make it a little less harsh. So I'm going to keep that, as I said before, but she's got a lot of wave and a lot of uh, extra hair up top that I'm not a fan of. So I'm going to come along with an inch first. I might go back with a three quarter, but whenever you're looking, whenever you're looking at uh, the goat, especially in the show ring, the judge is going to look at all angles of your animal. So they're going to look from the side, from the front, from the back. And what they're looking for 
um, obviously is muscle uh, because they're a meat animal. Structural correctness, um, you know, their mouth, their teeth, their pigment, all that fun stuff. But a big uh, factor that plays along in these animals is the width of their top, the width of their hip, the depth of their hip, um, and the levelness of their, their uh, top line. So, like I said before, you want that width between their shoulders. You want that width carried all the way down. Um, and sometimes hair can give you the illusion that it's not um, the widest that it actually is. Um, when you put your hands on her, that's one thing. You can see she's got the spring of ribs, she's got the width down her back, and she's got the depth of her hip, and she's got she's got the muscle in her hip too. Um, for a doe, that's, she's uh, very well off on muscle. But this curl in her hair on her top line, to me, it brings in the top and makes it look a little bit more narrow. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to cut this down a little shorter. I don't want it down to her skin. I don't want it as short as her neck is um, because I still want that full look, but I'm going to widen that out. So I'm gonna take an inch first. If I'm not happy with that, you'll see me change out attachments and I'm going to go with the three quarter. I would never go less than a three quarter on does um, or breeding stock. In my opinion, um, that's just, I don't like going any shorter than that on their backs. So I'm going to start off with the three quarter or the inch, and then if I don't like it, I'll switch to the three quarter. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my blending blade. Um, I've already gotten all the clipping with the attachments that I'm going to do done. So now I'm gonna go in and with the blending blade, I like to, um, so this line right here in the flank area, it's always got some long hair. The way I like to groom the does and the bucks and the kids is when I take pictures and when I bring them in the show ring, I like them to have a nice, clean line. I'm not gonna trim all the way up. I'm not going to shave it bald, but I'm going to clip that hair just to make it uh, give you a nice line to look. Uh, it's a nice focal point. So when you're looking at the doe sideways, or the buck or the kid. Um, just like in some of the pictures that I take, you'll see um, that nice line, that visual line that you see just gives a nice overall appearance. It adds to the length, it adds to um, the balance going into their hip and into their flank. It just makes it look, it brings the goat as, um, it just makes it look a whole lot better as one whole um, eye appealing look. So visually, it's not necessarily a necessary thing that you have to do, but personally, visually, I like to see that on um, the goats that I groom. So I like to do that with the, uh, the blending blade. Some people use a blocking blade. It's a little bit more uh, coarse, a little less forgiving. Uh, that's one, one major reason I, I picked the blending over the blocking blade is the blending blade is very forgiving. Things are very fixable if you mess up with it. Um, and it's sharp, so it makes a really super sharp cut. Not that the tin blade doesn't make that, but it cuts it a little bit more pristine, so you get a much cleaner line. Um, just like if you were painting with a paintbrush versus drawing the same line with a crown, um, that's kind of how I compare that. The tin blade would make a line like a crown would, um, where the blending blade would make a line like a paintbrush with nice, uh, good paint. So. I'm going to make that line there. You're gonna see me come over here and do what I call shaping. Um, she's already got a really nice deep hip. She's got a lot of meat to her. Um, so I really don't even have to do a whole lot. Um, but I'm going to take, she's not the most, her behavior is not the best. Um, so I'm going to take, I'm gonna trim this line on her tail, trim that nice and down, uh, make that an even line. Same concept with, with the, uh, the flank line. Then I'm going to shape, trim off all these extra hairs that have a nice rough look to it and just make everything look nice and even, um, make the line look nice and straight. And I'm going to blend into uh, her hawk here a little bit. And I'm just going to take away some of that hair because the muscle's there. I wanna highlight the muscle. I wanna highlight that depth of her hip and I wanna highlight um, the meat that's kind of gone down into her hawk area. And by doing that, I'm going to take 
my blending blade and I'm going to kind of cut notch into this area right here just a little bit. Uh, you can do too much. Um, I've seen them to where they've been scalped right here. I've done it myself. It's super easy to do so you want to be very careful whenever you uh, make that notch in there. That's where practice comes in with the blending blade. Um, that's that's a huge area that you want to practice on uh, to where you're not taking too much and you're not going to see skin because you want it to blend and look nice and even. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to clean up around her chest just a little bit, take some of these lines down, um, trim those lines. I'm going to trim a little bit in between her chest. So I'm going to go in between her legs. I'm going to nice, nicely clean all this extra hair up right here. Um, I might go back over with a quarter. So I'll take the quarter. I did a half on her chest, so I don't want to go all the way up. But right here at the bottom of the chest floor, I want that nice and cleaned out so that way it expands her chest floor and makes her look as wide as she is. So I'm going to take that, that quarter and clean up all that extra hair and on the inside of the leg as well. So that's what I'm going to do. like this. It's going to be sped up um, on the time lapse video. Then I'm going to go in directions like this and I just hold it ever so lightly in my hand. And it's all about your movements with your wrist. Um, you don't want to gouge in and you don't want to go super slow. Because if you go super slow, you're giving more time that that blade is touching the hair and the longer that it touches the hair in those places, the more hair it's going to cut. You don't want to cut a whole lot of hair at a time. The purpose is, is to blend. In order to blend, you want to cut the hair um, a little less fast. So you're gonna go with the grain of the hair and you're just going to follow that line. So you're gonna start a little bit above the line and go a little bit past the line. And that's going to bring the two um, lengths of hair together. You're gonna keep doing that until you get your desired look. Uh, some goats, it's a little easier than others. It just kind of depends on hair type. Um, the furrier and thicker the winter hair is, the harder it is to blend because you get lines. And I hate lines. Lines are like the worst thing in the world for my OCD. But um, your older domes are a little bit easier to blend. 
and your three to six month old does or buck suit are a little easier to blend usually because of their hair type. So um, I'm gonna start with the blending blade and I'm gonna blend that line all the way around. And another thing that you could do, you could cut the lines on the feet. I don't always, uh, bigger shows I do, but for right now, we're just gonna take her and picture her. Most of her feet's gonna be covered in the grass anyways, so I'm really not that concerned about it. Um, if you were fitting the legs, which I'm not going to do to her, um, fitting legs is a huge thing that's going on now. Um, I do it, a lot of people do it. It started off, it's a, it's a cattle thing, um, and started off in cattle, and then it's migrated to goats. Uh, started mainly in market, and now breeding stocks kind of uh, adopted that technique too. Um, I don't really have a rhyme or reason of why I decide to fit their legs. I like to fit the young does and young bucks legs a lot. Um, some of my older does, they don't have the hair to really play with, so I just don't even bother with it. Um, but if you're going to fit the legs with all the adhesive, that's a whole nother topic, whole nother video one day. Um, but I will say, if you're going to fit the legs, don't trim the hair yet. Because after you fit, you're going to go back in with a blocking blade and you're going to shape all the hair that you've um, fluffed up with the adhesive spray so you don't want to take any hair away until after you fit. So, all right, next step. All right, so here's an overall view of the animal after I finished her. She is one of our show does. So hopefully if shows uh, come back into play here soon, she'll be entered into a show ring near you guys. Um, she's, she's been kind of a pain to deal with today. You all probably couldn't tell a lot in the video, but um, she's definitely got an attitude. But she's a show doe and she's a princess and she knows it. So you can kind of see here, there's the width. And then her top line there, so you can kind of see where I've gone shorter on the hair. Um, you can kind of see that the line is invisible. So you can't see the line. You see that wave in her hair, but that's not the line. You can't see the line from her neck to her shoulder area because I've blended that. Uh, that takes a lot of practice. It doesn't happen overnight for you new people that are new to grooming. Um, and then you can kind of see I took in the inside of her, her foreleg or her forearm there, and I got inside there. That widens her chest floor a whole lot. She's already naturally wide, but um, that if the hair was super long underneath there, it would just give it an appearance of being a lot narrower than what she is. So the whole purpose of grooming a goat for show is to highlight their qualities and highlight the best features of the animal. Every animal I do is a little bit different um, in length of hair that I leave or um, where I decide to take hair and where I decide to leave hair. But this is an overall basic uh, groom job that I would do on majority of them. So here she is. Okay, so that um, concludes our video. Um, you've seen me wash the goat, you've seen me dry the goat, you've seen me groom the goat. This is a breeding stock doe. So this was done um, like as if I were taking her to a show. Um, so basically you saw me go through the step by steps and hopefully it helps. Um, I will hopefully be doing another video soon since now the weather has warmed up and we've had lots of time on our hands and hopefully I can do a younger doe, a buck, and then a market animal for you guys. So hopefully you all enjoyed the video and if you all have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, you can message me on my Facebook or you can go to our farm page, Richardson's Boar Goat, and uh, you can message me there. I moderate the page usually. Um, so most of the time the responses come from me and hopefully this helps.